Good uh, day. My name is uh, Tom Haak from the HR Trend Institute. And I'm going to talk to you today about HR trends and the implications for recruitment. My background is in uh, international uh, HR. Today I'm uh, uh, leading the HR Trend Institute and I'm involved in two other initiatives. You see the logos there, the HR Tech community, hrtech.community. Uh, that's a site where we try to uh, help people to get a view on uh, what the HR Tech landscape looks like. HR Incubator, you see below that, that's an initiative uh, in the Netherlands where uh, we uh, work together with, uh, with corporates, organizations and uh, HR innovators to uh, well, get things going faster and uh, make sure that uh, the HR innovations are really helping organizations in their transformations. What I would uh, like to do today uh, is, is cover 12 trend areas and uh, discuss with you what those trends have as implications for recruitment. And it could be 14, it could be 10, but I choose 12 uh, trend areas to cover with you. Number one is overall a very important uh, uh, trend. It's a mega trend, it's going on for a long time. That's the, the move, you could say, from a collective approach to a, an approach where you deal with segments to a real individual approach. And the uh, reality is today most organizations they work with what you could say segments um, there's not many that in the HR domain have really uh, uh, been able to to deal with uh, individuals and the individual wishes needs and capabilities uh, what comes with um, you could say the collective approach is things like job profiles and we say this is what we uh, uh, need and, and uh, we, we are looking for people who fit in that. Uh, this is our assumption what, what uh, is, is good for people in the organization. With the segments today, uh, uh, there's a lot of talk about personas. Basically, personas uh, are, are segments, but with a real uh, yeah. more marketing type of uh, description of the segments. And a real individual approach is dealing with each each individual and with his or her uh, needs, his or her uh, uh, capabilities, uh, wishes in an individual way. On the personas, uh, you, you, you have seen persona. This is a persona I made of, of uh, 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 taking myself as an example, huh? say Techie Tom. And uh, yeah, what are the characteristics of that segment? Huh? Uh, so it gives an example of, of, of a probably a bigger segment. Uh, you could say, uh, yeah, people who are uh, interested in, in, uh, in tech uh, are interested in new ideas. And then the question is, how do you approach that segment also in your organization? And it's not necessary to make all kinds of, of uh, assumptions, right? And the older people or the younger people or the high potentials uh, really most of the, the background of the personas of the segments should be based on real facts and data. And then, I, I, this is a, a chart I, uh, I got from uh, a German consultancy organization, TI uh, People. But basically, when you design the employee experience, you take the different personas as a starting point. So you might have in your organization uh, five, six, uh, uh, personas as a typical representation of a segment and then you say what does the employee journey of that persona look like how do we want to design it what does he or she expect at what in in in, in the different phases in the employee journey this is a very powerful approach uh, combining personas and the employee journey and I, I pictured it here in a different uh, way. Uh, you see here three to N personas. You see the employee journey, and then you can start designing 
probably you first start measuring uh, uh, what do the personas uh, expect and how do, you, do they experience the different phases in the employee journey today. So that was uh, trend number one, from collective to uh, a segmented approach to, and that, that's really something a lot of organizations are working on today, how can we get a more individual approach also in the area of recruitment, and I will come back to that. Number two, that is uh, from please the boss, PTB, to the, a real, you could say, a customer experience, employee experience. Uh, in, also in recruitment, uh, often the starting point uh, was in the past the organization, you could say the boss. We need this, hey, recruitment team, go find these kind of people. And the shift at this moment is how can we really become more employee-centric, candidate-centric uh, 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 organization? What do candidates in the market want? And how can we uh, tailor what we offer uh, to their, again, wishes, needs, and capabilities? So the candidate in the center and not the demands of the organization. Again, the, the employee journey is a good uh, um, a metaphor here. Uh, how, you, how do you design it? Also taking uh, the wishes of the candidates in mind. And of course, for the candidates, it starts with the recruitment experience. Um, and it starts with the image they get of your organization when they are not yet working uh, uh, for you. So that was number two. Uh, from PTB, please the boss, to a real candidate-centered uh, 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 approach, the candidate experience in the center. Number three, long-term megatrend. Uh, the shapes of organizations are changing uh, from the typical hierarchical uh, organization you see here, a pyramid. Uh, if you ask people, draw me an organization, they often draw a pyramid and uh, today not many organizations really have that shape uh, there, there you could say there's a couple of things uh, uh, happening one organizations are getting uh, flatter uh, we need less managers we need less leaders uh, many organizations are moving in, 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 into a shape where they have teams often uh, self-managed teams uh, 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 so the team is becoming more and more uh, uh, important. So organizations get flatter and organizations get more transparent. And where in the past the boundaries were very clear, this is our organization, you're in or out. The boundaries are uh, 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 getting more open. And uh, that also has a, an important implication for recruitment. And you can say, we need people really uh, on the payroll, so my job as a recruiter is to make sure people get on our payroll you could also say well my job as a recruiter is to make sure certain capabilities are available either in the organization or outside the organization and uh, this is just a picture saying well there's in most organizations there are many more people involved uh, 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 than just the people who are on the payroll and uh, so for a recruitment, it helps to take a broader scope, not only for recruitment, uh, but also, for example, for talent management. Uh, talent management also has too much, in my view, an internal focus. Uh, we need to keep the people in the organization. How do we retain the talent? Well, uh, that's maybe not the right question. How do we get access to the best talent that is available? And that's also for recruitment an important angle. So changing shape of organizations, consequences for recruitment. I already alluded to this trend, number four, uh, from individuals to teams to networks of teams. Still today, often, especially in the recruitment domain, uh, the individual job is the starting point. And the reality is that in most organizations today, the building blocks are teams. Um, teams working together in a network of teams and uh, 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 the, the network of teams consists of teams in the organization 
uh, teams that are half in, half out, and teams that are outside the organization. Uh, working with suppliers, working with teams of specialists that are not in the organization. So the question is, uh, if you look at recruitment and you are still very much focused on an individual approach, whether you don't miss opportunities. Uh, are you looking for teams? Are you hiring teams? Or uh, it is known that uh, uh, people who are successful in a team it's often very much dependent on that team. So if we can find ways to to to, to recruit teams, and uh, that might be uh, that might be a great win for organizations. So think about it. How can we make that transfer? And uh, networks. Um, of course, we know that networks are important. But are you looking also in your selection process at the network, the networks of candidates? Um, you don't only hire a person, but you hire a person with his or her network around it. As someone who has a strong network, who enters your organization, can often bring a lot more faster than someone with a rather weak network. Uh, if you can map it, this is a, an, an old uh, picture from uh, LinkedIn. It's uh, unfortunately, I've said it before, no longer possible. But this is just my network at a certain moment in time uh, but it, 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 it gives you a picture uh, if you have this from a candidate of a candidate you can say hey uh, how strong is your network today there are tools uh, you know cloud score uh, k-l-o-u-t dot com cloud score gives a number uh, assigns a number to the, the strengths of someone's uh, network this is my network uh, one of these days in cloud score 62 on on zero to hundred i don't know whether that's 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 good at least it's not not low uh, so if you have the cloud score of candidates at least you have a point for discussion um, linkedin has the social selling dashboard uh, try it for yourself i think you can try it one or two times uh, free and your social selling dashboard also gives an indication how strong is your brand or how strong is the brand of candidates you are talking uh, to and uh, uh, network this I, I, I like uh, th uh, this is an example simpler uh, but I, I like simpler is a referral tool but this is a referral tool that uses the network of people in an organization so uh, if I understand it well eh, they, they ask uh, people in an organization can we have access to your uh, LinkedIn uh, network and then when there is opportunities in that in, in, in that organization uh, um, simpler looks in the networks of people in that organization they can often do it better of course than, than you can do it yourself then they if they detect uh, candidates uh, uh, that might be suitable for the opportunity then they contact you and say hey Tom in your network there are one or two people uh, can you approach them and ask them uh, if they are interested so using the network th of course there are other uh, strong uh, referral uh, tools I just want to mention two here wi which I like uh, first bird and and Suzer. Uh, there are many more but but simpler first bird and Suzer I would certainly put on your list so using networks um, in several ways uh, using networks in the recruitment of course many of you are doing that but also looking at the strengths of networks of candidates because if you bring in a candidate with a strong network uh, that might be a very good candidate number five and that that has to do with the trend I, m I i discussed earlier the changing shapes of organization this is uh, from fixed jobs to more fluid roles and this is an important this has a really important consequences for recruit many organizations are making this shift where in the past and i think it's on on the next uh, the past traditional recruitment process went like this you have an organization there is a vacancy uh, if there is a vacancy you're already probably too late in your recruitment process but that is how it goes often you make a profile you say we're looking at someone who can do this and this and this and this uh, you start the recruitment you do the selection you make an offer etc etc one a slow process two a process which is very much uh, organized around the job and um, if you look today uh, many organizations they have teams 
they have a pool of capabilities and later on I will I will show you a picture uh, uh, and they are making a team uh, using the capabilities of people that are available inside or outside the organization so the job as a building stone is going and uh, the, the, the question is what are the consequences for recruitment uh, two, two things you see that the, an old practice which has been revitalized is job crafting basically saying job crafting is we're looking at the individual again uh, the needs the the wishes and the capability of a person we're looking at the demands of a team and then we're uh, crafting the jobs uh, 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 around what we need and around what people want job piling is a little bit different that's basically you have one job you have another job and maybe a little third job uh, but also job piling is happening inside organizations of course outside organizations as well it's not a bad strategy for individuals because if you pile jobs uh, you create more options because you never know what the future will exactly look like if you have only really uh, 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 one uh, uh, opportunity or one skill set that might not be very helpful so you see a shift eh, from recruiting for jobs to more recruiting for what are you looking for then and the personality of people uh, the cultural fit and of course the capabilities as well and but personality is important and because people with a certain personality fit better uh, i take one example how many organizations are looking for people with a real good learning agility if your learning agility is good you can adapt to new or uh, new situations you can learn uh, uh, faster the cultural fit does someone fit in our organization does he or she want to work for us uh, and capabilities in terms of does he or she have the capabilities that we need today and in the future in our organization important shift and you can imagine uh, important consequences for the recruitment domain so I've covered five. Number six, uh, only short habit. Uh, secret to transparent. Uh, that has uh, consequences for recruitment. Many organizations are still somewhere, uh, you could say, in between. Uh, salaries are often still not very uh, open. Even recruitment processes uh, are often uh, a little bit, you could say, secret. Uh, let's first look whether we know someone before we open it up to, to other people. Um, but you see simply, for example, when it comes to the salary uh, side, uh, people, candidates are going out there to uh, websites like Payscale, Indeed, Glassdoor, there are many others, and they say, hey, what, what can I expect? What am I going to earn? So they have their expectations, they have researched the market even before they ever talk to you. And I recommend you to use these type of sites and look also how, yeah, the answers relate to what you are offering people in your organization. Seven, gamification. Uh, 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 we see it everywhere and uh, also in the recruitment uh, domain, uh, using gamification to make things uh, more relevant, to make things, uh, but also make things, of course, more fun. So some examples. Uh, this is one uh, one I like, and, and a very simple one. This is uh, an organization, a Dutch uh, online retailer, Cool Blue. If you if you go to Cool Blue on uh, Google Street View, you can enter their office in Rotterdam, in the Netherlands, at the Vena, and then you can walk around the uh, the office, and you see all kinds of people there with masks or with bags on their head. It's simply done, but immediately you think, hey. This is a cool organization. This is a fun organization. Maybe I apply there for a job. And, and it, it's, it's indeed a very nice organization. So simply to do, you can replicate that. A recruitment uh, uh, in, in uh, a gamification in selection. Uh, I like this one. This is the Wasabi uh, Waiter. It's a selection game provided by a company called NAC, K N A C K dot com. Go there. Uh, and you are uh, a wasabi waiter the customers come in they have a certain expression on their face you have to predict what type of food they want you have to look at the at the available uh, available food so you play this for about 15 minutes and an organization get a quite good view on your uh, conceptual uh, intellectual capabilities 
Uh, the Cosmic Cadet is also used by uh, organizations. Uh, fun, uh, gamification, uh, not only in, in uh, you could say, the, the, the recruitment, not only in the selection, but also after that, uh, when you go to onboarding. And onboarding, of course, often starts when, when, when you employ someone, not on the first day uh, of, of the contract, but months before that. And also onboarding can be a lot more fun often than it is today. Uh, uh, gamification also in, in, uh, in, again, you could say branding or part of the recruitment process. Ha can you give people with, with, with augmented or virtual reality? You can, you can let them, give them an expression, for example, of the office where they're coming to work, of the team where they're working, of the job they're going to do. So you see many organizations uh, experimenting uh, uh, with this, making the whole recruitment and selection and onboarding process a lot more fun. And of course, that goes on uh, when people are really on the job. So let's make things more fun. And uh, number eight, purpose. We know uh, that long-term trend, more and more people are looking for jobs are looking for organizations that are really uh, you could say changing the world people want to work for organizations that are changing the world it's not easy for all organizations but it is something to take into account also in the recruitment uh, process and uh, this is a recent uh, list of uh, fortune i think it's it, it's called a change the world list uh, and, and you see the top 10 uh, uh, companies on that uh, uh, Change the World uh, list of 2017. J.P. Morgan Chase on number one, but DSM, an, a nice Dutch uh, company, uh, it's a Dutch multinational on number number two. Very important for organizations to be on these type of lists because uh, candidates are looking there and saying, hey, DSM. And, and you see DSM, I, 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 I took a shot on their webs uh, from their website eh, working for dsm working for dsm means doing something meaningful contributing to a better world it's easy said but if you can make it true uh, it really has consequences for the candidates you can attract to your organization that was number eight purpose i'm going to number nine i say here from mobile to artificial intelligence this is the whole domain of how do you use uh, yeah, technical solutions in your recruitment and selection process? And of course, there are many, many developments. I just want to show you a couple here. Um, facial recognition uh, is moving fast, uh, using, looking at the emotions of people in their face. Uh, of course, it can be used in video interviewing, but it's going further now. It's also saying, hey, can we, uh, if we look at someone's face, can we predict the personality. There's all kinds of, of ethical things to say about that, uh, but it's there, it's developed, and so you can be sure it's going to be used. Uh, Cameo is an organization uh, I, I recently spoke to, and they are in that uh, in that area, uh, uh, saying, "Hey, can we? Uh, uh, if if people are interviewed, if people send in a video, uh, if we ask a couple of questions, can we use that?" to make a better selection. Um, even more simpler, Textio, you've probably heard about Textio, I like it. At Textio is a tool that can analyze texts, uh, job profiles, for example, and say, hey, how good is your job profile? Can we help you to improve it? And uh, I think I have an example here. Yes, this, so this is a, a job that I put in Textio a while uh, ago. And uh, so Textio is then saying, hey, Tom, uh, I like that. They say, well, you, you are above average. Huh? Maybe they always say that, but at least you, you get a compliment. There's, there's good things. But for example, in this specific text, if you uh, want to attract more females, you, you better do something because your, your tone, the tone of your text is far too male. And it even gives suggestions uh, on, on the words that are maybe too maleish. Uh, so how I can change those words. So Textio, simple tool, but learning uh, from learning fast, using artificial intelligence to improve text. This is 
uh, also one of my favorite uh, personality insights powered by by Watson and this is you you can go there personality insights I, if you um, provide the machine with texts written by by anybody but if you say I, I uh, 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 provide text written by you I write a lot so I was able to copy and paste some blog posts in there you push the button and you get a quite good big five personality profile I did the test in a traditional way I did it with personality insights and the commonality was about 95 percent so increased speed huh? uh, 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 and, and a good way to do it and this is also something which you will see uh, candidates expecting and so uh, another trend I, I won't talk about it today extensively is with the consumerization of HR and the consumerization is around people are more and more expecting uh, experiences in the workplace like they have in their personal life so if this is possible and you ask candidates they say here's a questionnaire 100 questions please fill it in paper based or even online they will say hey you can do it in a simpler way you can do it a lot faster for example by using personality insights or there are other tools as well um, crystal i like as well oh, again a tool a crystal is a, is a little plugin you can, you can use it in linkedin you can use it in uh, gmail uh, and it helps you to tailor your emails or your yeah emails your your, your communication to people to their individual profiles good applications also in recruitment eh? instead of sending everybody the same message you can say hey let's first look uh, what do we know about their personality how would they like to be addressed so uh, crystal I like this is uh, uh, apply magic sauce using Facebook likes to get a personality profile quite powerful as well it becomes a little bit more frightening if you look at DNA but uh, also today uh, there are organizations that are capturing the DNA of uh, uh, people who are successful in certain professions then you send in your DNA and they can say hey which type of profession seems to match good with your DNA profile I've not tested it so uh, uh, I can't say that what my experience is so we're in the domain of uh, of, of, of technique artificial intelligence um, there you see the whole rise of uh, chatbots eh? uh, also in recruitment uh, very important um, it is surprising how many organizations still today if someone applies for a job send him or her an email saying hey Tom uh, we received your application uh, the process will take two weeks uh, uh, we you, uh, expect us back in, in, in two weeks and often it takes even uh, longer um, with, with the chatbots of today it's a lot easier hey, you, you, someone applies for a job you send the chatbot uh, on the preferred channel of the candidate it might be WhatsApp, it might be WeChat it might be Facebook Messenger and then the chatbot says hey Tom, uh, thank you for applying for a job I have a couple of of, of, uh, of of questions for you maybe you have some questions for me and and I would by the way I'm available 24 7 if you have any questions about the process if you have any additional uh, things so powerful uh, uh, solutions and there are different uh, providers that can help you to design those recruitment uh, chatbots uh, well these are some of mine Th these are not all recruitment this is a uh, captain feedback uh, that's a plugin in Slack you can use to get feed. This is Obi. Obi can find all the information you want everywhere. Uh, there's a couple of more. This is uh, Polly. Uh, well, you see many of the, the chatbots also have a persona these days. Powerful tools in recruitment. Use the chatbot. Number 10. And that's, that's no news for you. Uh, that's the increasing speed. And I outlined the traditional recruitment uh, process to you and it is very clear that the traditional recruitment process generally is far too slow um, so you have to see how can we speed things up and I mentioned chatbots they help to do it and I will show you later uh, what, it, what, what you can do in other areas 
to speed it up. This is an example I like. Simple. Uh, th this is an, uh, you see it in Dutch here. A ploy. I think it's available in Belgium and the Netherlands. That's a simple uh, tool you can use if you are looking for staff uh, in your restaurant, in your cafe. You need a dishwasher. You say, I need two dishwashers tonight. And the candidate dishwashers get it on their uh, app and they say, I'm available. Yes. And the match is made. So very quickly, especially in a, in a branch uh, like uh, uh, restaurants, etc. Yeah, you need to be very fast. Speed. This is a little bit more complicated, but I will try to explain, the, uh, explain it. And that's um, traditionally the assumption is, especially in the HR, that many things have a normal distribution. If you, for example, talk about the quality of candidates, say, well, there's an average candidate. Some candidates are better. Some candidates are not as good, but uh, 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 they are a normal distribution. The reality is that there, where we can measure it, where it can be measured, it turns out that the top performers, so this is, uh, uh, you could say, uh, the number of, of people, so there's a very few people, a uh, couple, but they show a tremendous high uh, performance. And maybe the average is here somewhere. Uh, but it's worthwhile to start looking in your recruitment process for those people. Um, in some professions, uh, the top performers are three times, four times, maybe even up to 10 times better than average. So if you find a candidate with that profile, you only have to hire one instead of five or six. Um, so don't assume a normal distribution. Uh, and data can help you. People analytics can help you. And that is trend number 12. Uh, that's go away also in the recruitment, in the profiling, in the selection from intuition, work more evidence-based. And it can't be said enough. It's, it's uh, remarkable uh, how still today many of the findings, scientific uh, findings, uh, are not used uh, uh, in, in the recruitment and selection uh, domain. And today with, with the data crunching uh, capabilities, uh, we can work a lot more evidence-based, easier than in the past. But it's not only a matter of data crunching, it's also a matter of using scientific evidence. Uh, my, my, I, I've said it a couple of times before, uh, the, it, it, has, it has, has, has been proven that the, sel the traditional selection interview is not a very reliable selection instrument. Still today, Many organizations use that as their main selection instrument. Why? Uh, there's many more ways to do it, more structured, and you get a higher quality candidate. So, um, and there are organizations here, I show Cruncher. I'm a fan of Cruncher, but, but Cruncher can help you, for example, to, to find out uh, what are the preferences uh, of people outside and inside the organization, and how can you uh, match those preferences with the available uh, opportunities in an organization. So what they do, uh, I simplified it here, but uh, you can imagine in these balls there are aspects of a job. For example, uh, they provide you with a bicycle at work, you have a, a good boss, and then what you have to do is say the most important one here, the least important one there. It takes probably five minutes to, to uh, uh, drag and drop the different aspects in this triangle. You analyze the data and you can see what individuals want and need, but also try to create groups back to the personas and say, well, here's a, a group of people with similar uh, requirements and needs, and how can we tailor the offering to what people are expecting? Cruncher, crunchereps.com. Um, in the measure, how you see the, the measuring, I, I showed you the employee journey uh, earlier. And what, what good core organizations are doing are really more or less real-time measuring all the as aspects, all the phases of the candidate journey, of the employee journey, and trying to find out how good is it? Can we improve? So this is again from TI people, but saying, hey, uh, uh, net promoter score uh, of people who apply, uh, 
generally they will ask questions like, would you recommend this organization as a potential employer to your family and friends? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, whatever. Uh, so constant measuring, providing, looking at your dashboard, saying, hey, there's something going wrong in this phase of the candidate experience. I'm coming to my last two pictures, kind of, you could say, summarizing many of the things I said in this presentation. So this is, in my view, the, the, the typical recruitment and selection process as it as it could be as in some organization it already is so i'll take you through it very quickly um, number one is what what are we looking for and there you use data you know from your people data you have been looking at hey what are the characteristics of people who are successful in these type of jobs in these type of assignments um, and you don't have to look at the couple, you can look at all the people in that domain. And so you really know what are the typical char characteristics I should be looking for. It, not only capabilities, but also uh, personality and maybe some other characteristics as, as well. Then you say to the machine, hey machine, go to the candidate pool and find me similar type of candidates. So the machine goes out, <laughs> uh, uh, makes a long list. Say, well, I found candidates that have similar type of characteristics. Then three, you send out a chatbot. Chatbot goes to the long list and, and says, hey, hello, my name is uh, Tom the chatbot. Uh, uh, are you interested in an opportunity in Company X? Uh, are you available? Uh, and if people say uh, uh, no, you say, well, maybe I'll, I will come back in a year's time and ask you again, can I do that? If people say yes, you ask them some additional questions like, uh, when are you available? Uh, what are, are your typical interests? In what region and what country would you like to work? So the chatbot uh, uh, makes the long list somewhat uh, uh, shorter. Then people for uh, the, 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 the diminished, the, the long list, not, not the short list yet, but the diminished long list uh, is, inter is uh, invited for some online test assessments, uh, all in a, in a positive uh, way. And the advantage of both the chatbots and the online testing is it can be available 24-7, so you speed up the process, back to the speed element. Then after step four, you have a real list of people who are... Uh, who fit in the profile, but also who are interested in the opportunity. And then you, you can invite them for additional interviews, uh, of course, to get to know the organization, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you onboard them, they start working, they develop themselves, and you track the performance of the people and you adapt your profile when necessary. And you can check, hey, we predicted that this would be an excellent candidate. Our prediction was not totally right. Is there reason to adapt the profile and you continue the process? In the meantime, eh, your whole employer branding, community management is, is keeping the pool, uh, is, is increasing the awareness of the pool. And uh, that's a whole other area. But if you go look today, this is already today possible. Uh, of course, not many organizations today are, are using all the opportunities of the full cycle. The advantages are it's faster, it's more reliable, you, it, it's, it's more data driven, uh, and it's a, learning, uh, it's a learning system. It gets better all the time. And in the different chapters, there are all kinds of tools that can help you to do this. N uh, the last uh, picture. Uh, is, is I try to picture, maybe it's not perfect yet, uh, but saying, how, how does it work in, in organizations uh, these uh, days? And, uh, the, you see the organization, the, bound, the boundaries are becoming, as I said, more blurring, not as solid as in the past. The organization consists of teams. These are all teams of six, of course. Uh, they can be larger, they can be smaller. Teams are working uh, together in the network of teams. Some teams have people inside and outside the organization. Uh, some teams might even be totally outside uh, the organization. I didn't draw that here. Uh, the teams need certain capabilities. 
So you are building a team here and say, what type of capabilities do we need? And you have pools of people. Some people can be more pools. Um, of course, the capabilities that are really uh, critical and center uh, in the center of your organization, you want to have in-house. Huh? So uh, these are capabilities one, two, three. Say we want to have them in-house and we need them a lot. So uh, 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 when we look at those pools, we can find people all the time. Some pools might be half. Say well, we have some people in-house, but uh, but if we need more, we can find them external. Some capabilities you won't be, uh, yeah, you won't have in your organization because either you, it's not possible. Huh? In some specialist areas, for example, people don't want to be on the payroll of organizations. Well, if you have nice jobs for me, come to me. Uh, now you can say this is recruitment. I call it here sourcing staffing. It's a little bit broader because you'd say the role of the sourcing staffing team is to make sure there's a good side on the capabilities that are needed today and also that are needed in the future. Do we have enough of the capabilities and how do we make sure we get them? And it's not only internal, but in my view, uh, the sourcing capability people should look at the totality uh, because that's when it's important. Can we quickly make teams? Uh, 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 and this is a complicated process uh, because it's not often um, people will be in different pools. So someone has capabilities in this pool, someone has capabilities, other capabilities in that pool. In this team, capab his capabilities or her capabilities might might be used. Here, other ones. So it's it's changing, it's fluid, uh, but this creates uh, one opportunities. Uh, it creates a lot of opportunities to make organizations more uh, productive because you are using the capabilities, you are using the potential of people in a lot better way. It enriches the, the, the task and the job of, uh, of so, yeah, I say, sourcers, staffers, uh, recruiters. Um, but uh, you can see many questions here. How do we pay people? Uh, how do we uh, run this uh, process? Super interesting uh, with big opportunities for HR to create its impact. So I made a little uh, checklist uh, for you. Uh, here are the 12 uh, uh, trends I uh, covered. Uh, you can say, well, how big are the implications for uh, recruitment? You can rate that for yourself. My feeling is that all the trends have relatively high uh, consequences for the recruitment uh, area. So, and, and those consequences can be super positive, but look at it, look at your recruitment process, also look at your recruiters, and are you able to, to, to use the trends to make your organization a lot better? So, um, thank you for uh, uh, listening. I tried to cover uh, um, many things maybe in, in a short while. Uh, I write about it, I, I talk about it, so you can find more information on uh, our website, the hrtrendinstitute.com. I'm active on Twitter. Uh, there's a nice Flipboard magazine, The Future of HR. For those of you who don't read but only watch pictures, uh, there is the, the Pinterest uh, uh, pages, so many more opportunities. Uh, thank you. Always interesting to hear your reaction, to learn more. Uh, and uh, I hope to uh, see you again soon. Bye-bye.